never gonna call face mask on Agar. It stinks, man. This guy kills me a whole life. He kills me. First down. Dallas got the ball to 20. I mean, Nelson Aguilar cost him the game. He's going to cost him the game. God, man, I can't. I just can't stand that guy so much. I can't. He catches that ball. He's probably running down to about the 30 yard line. Maybe he scores a touchdown. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Overs here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We are just six days away from kickoff of the season. I can't, can you believe it? Can you believe it? It is literally here right now. I, for one, I'm so happy that the off season is almost over. And um, we, of course, are dealing with what we deal with. Okay, you know, today I want to deal with the civil war of Jerry Jones and Dak Prescott. Right now, we are trying to figure out what's going on with that. Jerry Jones, I pointed out to me, is just pissed the hell off that he's got no control over Dak Prescott. And it is burning him up. Now, of course, you get Stephen A. Smith and crew that tell you that, you know, the Cowboys, they should just move on from Dak Prescott and just start all over. But, you know, it's kind of funny. It's easy to go ahead and be out there and say things, um, you know, that, that put this stuff out there, of course, for clicks. And it turns out, it seems like people are getting tired of the same old stick that every single day, it's always about the Dallas Cowboys. And so maybe they need to change some things up. But here's where this is talking out of both sides of your neck. You can't turn around and kill Jerry Jones for saying he's a great GM and then turn around and say it's all Dak Prescott's fault. Listen to this. I love Jerry Jones. You know, that's my buddy. But great is a bit excessive. Mm -hmm. Yes, he has located talent, and that is true as the general manager. You know what else he did? He hired and fired coaches. Oh, yes. Uh, since 1996, he's had seven head coaches. Seven. That's more coaches than playoff victories mm -hmm. in the last 28 years. He's got five playoff victories. At seven head coaches. How the hell are you a great GM and you got more head coaches than playoff victories? And it hasn't, not only have you not won a Super Bowl, you haven't been to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Not only have you not won or had an NFC championship, won an NFC championship game appearance, you haven't been to one in 28 years. The results define your success. You can't go on and. All right, so mind you now. Of the 10 top paid quarterbacks right now in the NFL, none of them have won a Super Bowl. Let me say that one more time. The 10 top paid quarterbacks, and these are all the guys that just got paid to Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allens, and uh, Trevor Lawrence, and Jared Goff and stuff. There are three Super Bowl appearances, but there's no victories. Now, Jerry Jones, trying to negotiate in the court of public opinion, and it doesn't seem to help any, is because they kind of tried to do that with CeeDee Lamb. It seemed like everybody was embracing CeeDee Lamb and ecstatic about him being back. But listen to Jerry. What more do you want to see? What more do you need to see from Dak Prescott to give him a new contract? Well, I, uh, you could easily say, uh, if you hadn't seen it by now, you haven't seen it. And so I'm, I'm such a fan of Dak's and appreciate all of the great things that uh, uh, we all know that he's there. And I appreciate his work ethic probably m more than anything out here. And I can't tell you how proud I am that we've got him this year to start this campaign. 
Uh, so um, uh, needing to see, I just gave an explanation of where when you look at a situation, you've also got to weigh, okay, what are the consequences of the other side of the coin? And so uh, the DAC situation uh, right now, for me, from my mirror, has more to do with our situation than it does with the merits of Dak Prescott being quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, some people, now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I took this differently than a lot of people did. A lot of people are like, oh my God, he put him on blast. I don't think he actually did because he ended up saying, you know, if you haven't seen it by now, then you're not going to see it because you might be closed-minded. You, you're not looking for it if you haven't seen it by now because you don't go through like that and then say, you know, that I love his work ethics, I love what he does, and at the end he says Dak Prescott's situation has more to do with us as an organization than it does with Dak's talent. To me, I took that as we're as much to blame as Dak Prescott is. That's the way I took it. Maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. And then we had... This is where it also gets interesting, too, because people took this um, maybe differently than what it was. You know, when you stand back and read it again and listen to it and you understand there's key words in there. Maybe they put the key words in there so there's plausible deniability. But to me, this actually makes sense. And it should be words for all of us to live by. Dak said, I stopped honestly listening to things Jerry Jones says. Now, if it stopped right there, you'd be like, oh, he's not listening. You know, there's a riff there. But then it says, to the media. That is the key a long time ago. If he had said, I stopped list honestly listening to things Jerry Jones says a long time ago, that would be, oh, yeah, he's just like, screw you. But I stopped honestly listening to things Jerry Jones says to the media a long time ago. Because you could look at this and say, we bought into the idea that Jerry said, we're all in. And then he doubled down and said, we're all in. Jerry Jones has said a lot of things that don't happen. He just does. And as Dak finishes it off, it doesn't really hold weight with me. And you know, I'm going to say that Maybe Jerry Jones is playing this the right way for the short term, not for the long term. Maybe for the short term. Maybe Jerry Jones is right about having players pissed off. Because here's the thing I'm going to say about Dak Prescott. You know, everybody has always doubted Dak Prescott from high school, getting his first start to college. He wasn't supposed to be the star. He certainly wasn't supposed to be where he is now with the Dallas Cowboys. Nowhere near where he is with the Dallas Cowboys. But yet he is. And he has always bet on himself. And if it ends up being that the Cowboys don't, don't get him signed, I'm going to say that the Dallas Cowboys all-time TD passing record will be in jeopardy. That the all-time yardage record will be in jeopardy that Dak Prescott will go on a tear and obliterate the numbers to be the best player that he can be pissed off and ready to get paid. If Dak Prescott for the third time in six years literally is taking all the risks, I'd have to say, F you, Jerry. You, you worry about $60 million? You want me to come back? It's going to be 65 And having a season like that, having another, you know, runner-up MVP or MVP like it should have been last year, season, you have literally put them between a rock and a hard place. So let's see what the talking heads have to say about this situation this morning. And um, get a good laugh at it. Away from the start of the NFL season, the Ravens and Chiefs will play next Thursday night. Still a lot of business that has not been concluded, and none of it more significant than as it pertains to that man. Dak Prescott still does not have a new deal with the Cowboys, so he enters the final year of his contract, and 
is set to hit true free agency in March. Yesterday, he was asked about the importance of having a deal before the season begins. Listen to what he said. You don't need a deal done before the season? Uh, I don't need a, no, no. Do you, would you like it done before the season? Uh, I think it says a lot if it is or if it isn't. Um, but however, doesn't doesn't really matter to me, to be honest with you. What does it say if it is? Just how people feel. How do you feel about, <laughs> Jerry said the negotiation isn't about your merit as the Cowboys quarterback, but more about their cap situation. What do you take from that when he says, you know, it's not really about what you're doing? Yeah, I understand that. That's the business and the nature of this, this game that we play. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I stopped honestly listening to things that he says to the media a long time ago so um doesn't really hold weight with me mm. he said that with a smile yeah. <laughs> but you know there's a, a kernel of truth at the base of every joke right well, what yeah. did you take away from that like like he doesn't care because he talks directly to jerry like he knows what yeah. jerry says to him yeah. right matters a heck of a lot more than what jerry says when he's when he's entertaining uh so i think dak is approaching it the right way he shouldn't be listening to the stuff Jerry says out loud in the media. He should be listening to what Jerry says to him face to face. It is right. also worth pointing out. You have said this multiple times, and you said it in our meeting again this morning. If if so, we have we are all talking about this as though it is a fait accompli that he will go into this season without a contract. Right. Except for you, you are not talking about it that way. The, the possibility still exists that he gets a deal done before they they open the season. It does. Like. <laughs> Dak Prescott, this is a comfortable and confident human being you listen to him talk. And the reason is he's in complete control. He will get whatever it is that he wants, right? Like whether if that's a deal before the season with the Dallas Cowboys, then that's what will happen. If he wants to take it to free agency, then that's what will happen. They can't franchise him. They got the big dead money hit coming next mm -hmm. year. He is in total control. So whatever the outcome is, and there is still a wide range of possible outcomes, including he signs today, um, it's yeah. because he wants it. You were laughing while he was talking. What, what, what was it that struck you as funny? I mean, because it was Captain Obvious, right? You can't pay attention to what Jerry Jones does. That's <laughs> Jerry Jones, the entertainer. It only matters what you say to, to each other and what he says to your agent. But Jerry, I, to me, Jerry is doing it right. At this point, like, Jerry has a blank check, and he's going to have to give it to Dak Prescott at, sooner or later. But why give it to him sooner when you don't know how the outcome of the season is going to come? Like, Right now, Dak Prescott is in a position where he can be Joe Flacco. I bet on myself, and I can get hit the open market. But Jerry Jones will write him a check for whatever he wants if he wins a Super Bowl. Right, right. So why not make Dak a little uncomfortable? Why not? I, I like my, my quarterback pissed off and saying, oh, he don't want you. Let me show you. Because that's what they need. I need that sense of urgency so he can show. You're, I, Jerry's doing it all wrong. No, at Dak this Prescott. point, no. He's past the point of no return. So what we saw yesterday was the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Dak Prescott isn't talking to the media or Jerry Jones. He's talking to the owner of the Raiders, Mark Davis. So, He's oh, talking to the Raider of the oh. Giants, John Mara, because I am mm -hmm. Dak Prescott. Oh, go to I that organization. Total, Good wait, luck. I am in total control, yeah. okay. and I can go wherever I want. And my agent, Todd Listen. France, is probably having conversations Listen. off the record, <laughs> dealing out the market. So he can leave okay. Dallas. And, okay. And Jerry okay. Jones, by the way, Jerry Jones, who walks around this planet with leverage in every situation. Okay doesn't have leverage this time. That's the time, the, the, the time you made me the highest paid linebacker in NFL history. They you, know, you know who else is on the other line? The Detroit Lions. You know what they said? I got a blank check. And I said, no, thank you. The grass is not always green on the other side. A stable organization in the Dallas Cowboys does not compare to the Las Vegas Raiders with a new coach with, a, with, with skilled players that may be leaving you know, mm -hmm. the organization. Devontae Adams. Brock Devontae, Bowers. Devontae Adams may get traded. So by that's, about midseason. That's the question you confront if you're Dak Prescott right now. Like if Grass the Cowboys are trying to sign you before the season starts, you would not probably get as much as you would get if you got to the open market. Exactly. So what's what what's the priority? But, but if I'm but if I'm Jerry, why would I pay this guy early see? when he can get injured? Same where thing. he or, or pay we can, we the. the the Eagles can dominate us, and the Washington Commanders surprise us. Same reason. And I'm gonna give him quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence has got 55 million a year. What's he done? I understand that, but what I'm saying is, Jerry is, is the price isn't gonna go too much farther up. 60 the million is probably oh, the cap. Oh, but, 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 but the price could go Dude. down if he stinks it up, and the uh -huh. team don't win. Why would I want to pay a guy 60 million dollars and I don't win a playoff game again? 
Well, so let me and then I'm stuck with all this money there and I got to no pay guarantee. Michael Parsons. See, this and then now I'm stuck with this guy stupid. for five years. Or I pay him and he gets hurt tomorrow. And then now I got a quarterback that's been hurt twice with catastrophic injuries. And I paid him now. Jerry, sit back and let it play out. At this point, you have the point of no return, in my opinion. So, Greedy, let me take the three of you guys into the room mm. where we're having these discussions if we're the Cowboys. And we're saying, what's the option? What's the alternative? This team, if Dak Prescott there walks is out, is a lot closer to having Shador Sanders as their quarterback next year than they are Dak Prescott because they are. That not may be better. Player. That may be better with a cheap. We see the 49ers doing it with a bunch of young talent around it with a cheap quarterback. That may be a better option. Or I may say, hey, let me go trade for uh, Kirk Cousins. I know they got a first round draft pick that they they might want to give up that. Like <laughs> if you're not winning nothing with him. Then why make him the highest paid oh. player? Mike's good at TV. Ties the whole show together. Right. Oh. Sanders, Sanders, yeah. Dallas Cowboys is perfect. I, I, but Love I think the, what, the, the point that you are making, and it's not wrong, and you're not really saying different things. If Dak Prescott walks out the door, you're starting all over again. Yes. That's what you're doing. Right. You're starting from scratch. And so you're figuring out who the next quarterback is. And is the next quarterback as good as Dak Prescott? Probably not. But is he mm -hmm. $60 million worse than Dak Prescott? That's the question if you're Jerry. You're asking yourself. Look, it looks to me like they're going to go into the season and they're going to figure it out. And they're going to have all their chips in the middle of the table. Let and it's going to be a fascinating ride. I have three questions. All right. So there's, there, there's your discussion right there. So that's my thoughts on it. One, I don't think it was as edgy as everybody made it out to seem. But clearly, there is some tension that's there. And um, again, you tell me what you think. Do you think if Dak does not have, I, I'm going to tell you, regardless of contract or no contract, you're going to get everything from Dak Prescott. Um, but definitely, you don't want him to have the great season and then say, screw you. But then again, Dak might think that being in Dallas is the place to be. All right, good people. I've got a lift that I've got to go get on and do some work on uh, the Red Brick House and another house and everything else. I'm going to try and get my money's worth out of this mother humper that I have for a week. And as always, I appreciate you guys. And um, I will see you real soon because... It is football season. Oh, my God. Can you believe it is literally football season? Peace. I fire Howie. Fucking fire. Motherfucker. Stupid motherfucker. What an idiot. Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver. Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson. He's ass. He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. <laughs>